Hello, my name is Frank Amberry, and it's my sincere pleasure to introduce to you this presentation by Dr. David Hilson. Dr. Hilson is a highly regarded thought leader in project risk management, an award-winning author, and a highly sought after presenter at seminars, symposia, and conferences. In this presentation, Dr. Hilson will talk to us about managing project risks that we did not know we have. We all recognize the importance of risk and opportunity management, and we uh, identify risks, and uh, we analyze them, and we figure out how to respond to them. However, the thought here is, what about those risks that we don't know exist, that we do not know we have as we take on projects, as we progress through projects? Enjoy the presentation. Thank you, Frank, for that very nice introduction. It's great to be here at Drexel, and I'm very much looking forward to sharing some ideas with you about risk management, which I hope will extend your view of what the subject means and make your management of risk more effective. So the title of my presentation today is How to Manage the Risks You Didn't Know You Were Taking. And this arises from the problem that we have a very narrow view of risk, and so when we try and do risk management, actually what we're doing is only managing a proportion of the risks that we're exposed to, and then when things happen on our projects that were unexpected, uh, we're surprised and we have the impact of those risks because we didn't know that they were risks that we were taking. So I want to just expand our view of risk and to do that let's start with a perception of how most people think of risk and then we'll perhaps build out a little bit from there. So you'll see here from this slide some, uh, some humorous pictures uh, just with what most people would think of when we talk about risk. Maybe you think risk is just some, some big ugly thing that's out there facing you and it's waiting to squish you, uh, make your life very difficult. Uh, maybe you think you have a target painted on you. Uh, this is actually a real job in North Korea, would you believe? Um, but a lot of people feel that risk is just targeting them and it's going to hit them sooner or later. Or perhaps like the guy at the bottom, you'll see that uh, risk is just something out there, uh, not quite well defined, but as soon as you put your toe in the water, you start your project, then there it is waiting uh, to catch you unawares. Um, that's how most people would think of risk, as a big, ugly, horrible thing in the future waiting to get them. And I'd like to suggest to you that that is not a complete view of what risk really is. And if you limit your view to that sort of thinking, then you won't be managing all of the risks that could affect you and your project. So to understand the true breadth of the concept of risk, let's go back to first principles for a moment. What's the difference between risk and uncertainty? Clearly these two aren't the same thing. There are billions of uncertainties in the world. Well, we probably don't even know how many. But when we come to think about the risks that could affect our project, certainly there aren't billions. There's maybe 10 or 20 or 50 or even 100. But what's the difference then between the billions of uncertainties and the few risks that we want to identify on our project? What's the filter that we need to use to turn that billions of uncertainties into a manageable number of risks for our project? All risks are uncertain, but not all uncertainties are risks. So how do we distinguish between the two? Let me suggest three simple words to separate risk from uncertainty. And it's these. Risk is uncertainty that matters. Because the vast majority of the uncertainties in the world out there don't matter. Is it going to rain in Kazakhstan tomorrow afternoon? I don't know, but I don't care. It might or it might not, but it doesn't matter to me. So I'm not going to write it in my project risk register. What's the exchange rate going to be between the Russian ruble and the Chinese yen in 2030? Don't know, don't care. It's an uncertainty that doesn't matter. Will my chief technical officer leave the project in the middle of my project with no replacement? That's an uncertainty that matters. That's a risk to my project. Uncertainties that matter are the ones that can affect our objectives. And it's very important that we recognize that risks are only the uncertainties that matter. And we find this in a number of uh, formal definitions of risk. Uh, here's some examples from five uh, global and uh, project management standards where the definition of risk includes these two halves, something to do with uncertainty and something to do with what matters as defined in our objectives. 
So the ISO 31000 standard, the international standard for risk management, says that risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. We find the PMBOK guide from PMI says risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs affects objectives. And you'll find these same ideas in all of these different international standards. Risk is uncertainty that matters. And when we start thinking about uncertainty that matters as a pre-definition, as an idea of risk, it raises two key questions. What kinds of uncertainty are we interested in and how might they matter in terms of our projects? And this is where the limited stink thinking starts to come in. For most people, when we think of answering those two questions, we think about uncertain future events and uncertain future events that have a negative effect on our project's budget or schedule. In other words, we limit our thinking of risk to threats. A threat is an uncertain future event that if it occurs, wastes time or wastes money. And whilst that's true, it's certainly not the only truth there is about risk. Risk is much broader than just uncertain future events that if they occur have a negative effect on the project budget or the project schedule. There are many more types of uncertainty that matter, but most of us limit our thinking to this. The truth is that any uncertainty that matters is a risk that needs to be identified, assessed and managed. And that's where we need to broaden our thinking. And that's what this presentation is about. So what are we missing if we think that all risks are only threats, uncertain future events that could have a negative effect on our project budget or schedule? On the uncertainty side, we're missing the fact that there are different types of uncertainty, not just uncertain future events. And on the mattering side, we're missing the point that things matter in different ways, not just bad things that could happen to our time and cost. So we need to expand our thinking about types of uncertainty and we need to expand our thinking about types of mattering. So let's start with the easy one. The easy one is different ways in which things matter. How can things matter to a project? Impacts, we call these impacts. Impacts include things that may or may not happen in the future that if they do occur are bad for us and those are the threats that we typically think of in risk management. But there are also uncertainties that if they happen would help us. Things that might or might not occur, but if they do occur, they would save time or save money. They would make it easier for us to achieve our objectives. And these things are important, and these things need to be managed as proactively, as intentionally, as the uncertainties that if they occurred would hurt us. So both uncertainties that help and uncertainties that harm us are important. They are both uncertainties that, well, that matter. And managing risk, risk needs to include both of these things. It needs to deal with the uncertainties that harm us, so we need to prevent potential problems. We need to stop things going wrong on our projects. But we also need to be looking for ways that things could go better than planned, for improving our projects, for helping things to go right finding potential benefits, ways to work faster, smarter or cheaper, in addition to finding things that might make us work slower and more expensively and with fewer benefits. So both of these things are important and we use these words opportunity and threat to describe the two types of uncertainty that matter. Opportunities may never happen. They are out there in the future. If they do happen, they matter because they help us to save time and save money. So they are uncertainties that matter, they're risks. In the same way that threats are uncertainties that matter, they may never happen, but if they do happen they matter because they affect our project's budget and schedule. So we find that both opportunities and threats are types of risk and risk management should deal with both of them. And if your risk management is only focused on threats, then you're missing probably half of the risks that could affect your project. The positive half, the good half, the upside half which is not a good thing to do. So, uh, what about other types of risk? When we think about uh, risk not being threats only, uh, here's a silly picture I found on the internet just to illustrate this. Um, the little mouse here is trying to manage an uncertain situation and he's a very clever mouse, he's like a project manager. He's seen the trap, recognised that there are uncertainties that matter in his project 
things that could kill him or injure him. And in this uncertain situation, he's going to manage his risks by, well, wearing his little helmet and going very carefully. And we need to do that on our projects. We need to see the things that could waste time and waste money that could damage us or even kill the project, protect ourselves and go very carefully. But there's another uncertainty that the mouse has seen in this uncertain situation. And it's this, it's the cheese. Can I get the cheese off the trap? That's an uncertainty that matters. Maybe he can and maybe he can't. And clearly he needs to manage two types of uncertainty at the same time in order to be successful. He needs to get the cheese out of the trap and stop himself being killed or injured. If he just doesn't spring the trap, so he doesn't uh, get killed or injured, but he doesn't get the cheese, he's failed. And if he gets the cheese, but he's injured or killed, he's failed. Now we have to be like the mouse in managing both types of uncertainty in our projects because there are not only traps in our project, there's cheese in your project and in mine. But what does cheese mean in a project? Well, cheese means value. Cheese means benefits. Cheese means products and services that people want and need. Cheese is why we're there, because we have a need for something that we need to fulfill, just like the mouse with the cheese. And what we have to do in projects is not only stop things going wrong, we don't injure anybody, we don't waste time, we don't waste money, but we also have to deliver benefits and deliver value. And like the mouse, we have to do both at the same time. So if we deliver something on time, on budget, nobody's injured, but there's no value, we didn't spring the traps, but there's no cheese, we failed. If we deliver something of value, but in so doing we damage the company's reputation and we injure people, then we failed. We have to get the cheese out without springing the traps. So it's important that we recognize both these types of uncertainty. And in the PMI definition of risk, which is captured in the PMBOK guide, chapter 11, and it says here the 2013 edition, but the new version coming out in 2017 will say the same thing. It says here that risk is an uncertain event or condition that if it occurs affects objectives. We've seen this uncertainty that matters, but there are three words missing. Three extra words that PMI has added into their definition to reflect the cheese as well as the traps. And they are these words. If it occurs, it has a positive or negative effect on a project's objectives. There is cheese as well as traps, and we need to manage both. And of course, the message here is that there's always a better way to do it, a better way than you've thought of before, of getting more cheese out with a lower chance of springing the traps, as, as you can see here. So we've, we've discovered that when we're thinking about the mattering side, it's not just threats to a project's budget and schedule we need to think about. There are also opportunities to save time and save money. Is there anything else to think about on the mattering side of the uncertainty that matters equation? Well, it's not just about time and cost. It's not just about the project schedule and the project budget. A project has other objectives and any objective can be affected by risk, either positively or negatively. Yes, we have a project budget and a project schedule, but we also have technical performance objectives. We also have health and safety or maybe compliance objectives. Maybe profitability or margin is important to us or the strategic fit of our project within the overall portfolio of our business objectives. Each of these things could be affected by uncertainty, either negatively, making it harder to achieve them, or positively, making it easier to achieve them. And so there are risks that affect our performance and reputation and technical compliance and all of these other types of objective. Any objective could be affected by risk, either positively or negatively. And a mature, complete risk process should handle all of those types of risk. So let's just summarize on the mattering side of the, of the equation. When we think about mattering, it's not just time or cost. We need to think about positive as well as negative impacts, opportunities as well as threats. And we need to think about all objectives of the project, not just time and cost, not just the schedule and the budget. So that's quite simple, isn't it? Uh, instead of it just being uh, future uncertain events that could have a negative effect on the project schedule and budget, we need to think about negative or positive effect on any project objective. But what about the uncertainty side? 
What are we missing on the types of uncertainty that we consider when we're thinking about risk? Let's go back to the definitions and see what our standards organisations have to say. PMI, in its definition of risk, says something very interesting. It says that risk is not just about uncertain future events. Here's the definition from the PMBOK guide. An uncertain event or condition that, if it occurs, affects objectives. The UK Association for Project Management has very well-developed guidelines for risk management. It says something very similar. It says that risk is an uncertain event or set of circumstances that affects project objectives. And the ISO standard, ISO 31000, also says that risk management must explicitly address all forms of uncertainty, all types of uncertainty, not just uncertain future events. So what other kinds of uncertainty are there? Clearly there are things in the future that might or might not happen, but what other types of uncertainty might we consider? Now risk management, like any other technical discipline, has its own language, its own jargon. And so we risk specialists use this kind of language to talk about different types of uncertainty. We talk about stochastic, aleatoric, epistemic and ontological. The question is, what on earth do those things mean? Uh, I, I only just know what they mean and I, perhaps some of you won't have a clue what they mean. So let's try and just explain them in, in ordinary terms. Stochastic uncertainty is event risk. These are the uncertain future events that most of us think of. Stochastic is from a Greek word that just means it happens or it doesn't. Aleatoric uncertainty is when we think about variability. So we're going to do something, this is our plan, it could be more or less. So variation on something which we plan to do is aleatoric. It comes from the Latin word alia, where we throw a dice and the answer could be one, two, three, four, five or six. We know what the answer range is, we just don't know precisely what the value will be. So we're going to do a test and the answer, the duration of the test could be one, two, three, four, five or six weeks. We just don't know exactly how long. That's aleatoric uncertainty. The Greek word episteme means knowledge. And epistemic uncertainty comes from our lack of understanding or our lack of knowledge. It comes from ambiguity, lack of clarity, lack of knowledge or understanding. And then we have this last category, ontological. Something which is ontological is to do with your worldview, with your frame of reference, with your conceptual framework in your mind. And ontological uncertainty is also known as emergent risk. It's risk that appears from a place that you couldn't imagine, something that was completely outside of your frame of reference. So you had no idea that there was anything over there at all. It is the truly unknown unknown. So these are these four types of uncertainty. There's events which may or may not happen, variability around the value of something that we're going to do, uh, uncertainty about our understanding or knowledge of something, ambiguity, and then emergence of things that we couldn't even conceive in the first place. All of these types of uncertainty, if they matter, need to be managed. And we need to include them within our risk management thinking and our risk management practice. So let's just expand on each of these four types briefly and see if we can learn a little bit more about them. First of all, let's start with stochastic risk or events. This is easy because these are the uncertain future events that may or may not happen that most of us think about. So typical examples would be losing a key supplier during the project. It might happen or it might not. The client may choose to allow us to make incremental de deliveries. That would be a good thing or they might not. We might lose one of our critical resources just when we need them or they might stay with the project. These are uh, absolutely standard uncertain future events which may or may not happen. And we manage those through the routine risk management process that everybody's familiar with, identifying the risks, analysing their probability and impact, planning responses, then implementing them, and then having a risk review that repeats. So managing stochastic risk or event risk is quite simple and it's what most of us are used to doing. But the other three types of risk, the other three types of uncertainty might be new to you and they might not be within your thinking about risk and so you might not be managing them at all. Let's think about those. The next one to think about then is variability risk, aleatoric, throwing the dice and you're not quite sure what value will come up when you throw the dice. This is where we have a certain future event, something that we know will happen, we're definitely going to do this, but there's something about it that could be variable, which is uncertain. 
Let's look at some examples. As I mentioned earlier, we might be running a trial. We plan the trial to be six days, but it could be completed in five or four, or if we're really lucky, three. Or it might take eight days or 10 days or 15 days. We're definitely going to do the trial. It's a certain future event, but the duration is variable. Or productivity. We plan our project on an assumed productivity rate. When we run the project, it could be above or below that target. We have a plan for our raw material costs. When we buy them, actually, it could be higher or lower, or the weather could be better or worse than usual. These are variability risks where we know we're going to do something. Something about the actual result is unknown. And this is handled through quantitative risk analysis, where we make estimates of the range of possible uh, results of our uncertainty. We build those into a risk model, and then we run the model to see what could happen on the project, given the range of possible outcomes. And our minimum, most likely, and maximum, for example, that we put into the standard quantitative risk model comes from the opportunities, the plan, and the threats. The minimum is the best possible case, let's say for our trial duration or our productivity rate. The maximum is our worst possible case, the longest duration for the trial or the worst productivity rate. And the most likely is the plan in the middle. So we're quite used to having variable um, inputs to our risk models and these reflect variability or aleatoric risk. So this shouldn't be too difficult to handle if you're familiar with the ideas of Monte Carlo simulation and quantitative risk analysis. When we come to the third type of risk, we're starting to get a little bit further from what most people are used to. What do we do about epistemic risk, the ambiguities in our project, where we're going to do something, but there's something about it that we don't fully understand, that we don't fully know or comprehend? And our lack of knowledge or understanding leads to uncertainty around what the outcome might be. It would be help, helpful to have some examples, wouldn't it? How about this? We're going to uh, launch a new product. We know that for sure. Competitors will have some kind of reaction when we come out into the marketplace with our new product. But what will it be? Will they be hostile? They'll launch their own new products. Maybe they'll withdraw from the market and give up and say, well, with your new product, we're not going to play. Maybe they'll propose a partnership with us and they might want to actually uh, co collaborate instead of co uh, compete. So their response is uncertain. We don't know, we don't understand. And that could affect our product launch. Or how about uh, we have a, a highly complex uh, project, a highly complex system design. We know we're going to do that, but the implications of that complexity are unknown. As with all complexity, when we do something in the system, we're not entirely sure what might, what might result because of the complex interactions within the system. So these are sorts of things where we know we're going to do something, but we're not entirely sure what the impact or the results might be because the results are ambiguous, they're outside of our current knowledge. How do you deal with that? Well, clearly what we need to do is to improve our knowledge and understanding. And the two key ways of doing that are through exploring and experimenting. In project terms, we might do prototyping or benchmarking. We might have incremental development. We might adopt an agile or an incremental project approach. Or we might ask other people to contribute to our projects who do have experience and understanding in these areas which are new and unknown to us. So there's a number of fairly clear techniques or strategies that we could use to handle ambiguity as it might affect our project. Which leads us to the fourth and in some ways the most difficult type of uncertainty of all. We call it emergent risk or ontological risk. And the other kind of uh, modern name for this or the jargon name is the black swan. Black swans, uh, the, the name for this as an event or a type of risk, arises from the idea that in the 16th century, so 500 years ago, we were certain that if you saw a big bird that was white with a long neck and a beak, it lived on water and it flew with a very big wingspan, it was a swan. Everybody knew that swans were big and white. And it was just known that if it's a swan, it's white. Then we discovered Australia and New Zealand. And there was a big bird with a long neck and a beak and a wide wingspan, it lived on water, but it was black. So it couldn't be a swan because it was, all the other characteristics were right, but it was the wrong color. And initially it had a different name. Everybody thought it must be a different species of bird until they learned a little bit more about it and discovered indeed there are black swans. 
that in fact those are the only types of swans in Australia and New Zealand. They always existed, we just never had any concept that there could be such a thing as a swan that was not white. And so that idea of the black swan has been used to illustrate these emergent or ontological risks, things which we can't conceive of until we see it. So it's the things which are conceptual limitations in our view of the world or our, our concepts of how things work. They are not just unknown unknowns, but they are unknown and unknowable. We just couldn't know that because it's immediately outside uh, of our frame of reference. So it's impossible for us to understand. And of course, it's hard, hard to give real examples. How can I explain to you something which I don't know and I don't understand? It's not possible. We can look at some previous examples. Uh, so the illustrations here of the 2008-9 global financial crisis. Everybody thought it was impossible. The financial system was secure. It, it's not possible that there could be a global crisis. And then it happened. Um, or how about the fall of the Berlin Wall? Before the 80s, we knew that there were two world systems, capitalism and communism. They were equal and competing. There was a stasis, there was a balance. And then suddenly there was a revolution in East Germany and the Berlin Wall fell and so did communism and the Soviet Union. And we have a different world order. Or the development of the internet, which has suddenly come and revolutionized the way that we communicate and the way that we find out information. A positive, disruptive invention that was inconceivable only 20 years ago. And then social media, and I've used the original logos here to remind you of what Google and Twitter used to look like. And now the way that people communicate from the highest offices in the land down to humble kids, uh, kids in their bedrooms communicate through Twitter. And they're tweeting away, saying all sorts of things uh, which completely change the way that we communicate. These were black swans, uncertainties that emerged and had huge impacts. They were risks that mattered. And how do we manage those things? We can't manage them before they happen because we don't know that they're there. Or can we? Can we do something called project continuity management, which is preparing in advance for things that we don't know that if they did happen would affect us? It's a bit like business continuity management. Business continuity management says there may be some disaster, let's say it takes out my entire, entire IT system or which prevents half of my workforce from getting to work. I don't know what that thing might be, but business continuity management says, let's prepare a contingency plan. So if something takes out my IT or something stops half my people coming to work, I can recover and continue. And we could do the same kind of thinking for our projects. We could have project continuity management that said, if something happened, which I can't imagine, which would affect my project in a major way, how could I recover and continue? So we need to build resilience and flexibility into our project plans and then have a good environmental scanning system that looks out around us and says, what signs are there that something might be about to change in our environment, in our, in our context, which could widely affect our project? So there are things we can do actually to manage the things that we can't even imagine by preparing in advance responses to deal with the effect of something that we can't currently see. So on the responding to different types of uncertainty, we need to think about four types of uncertainty, not just uncertain future events. On the uncertainty side, we need to cover all four types of uncertainty, stochastic, aleatoric, epistemic, and ontological. Or if you can't remember those names, then we need to cover uncertain future events, variability in things that we plan to do, but we're not sure of the exact value, ambiguity about things where we don't understand or we have some lack of knowledge, and emergent risk that will come out of the blue from a place that we can't imagine and affect our project. All of these things are uncertainties that need to be managed. So let me wrap up with these last few thoughts. Managing the risks that we didn't know we were taking. It matters because how we think about risk, our concept of risk, will affect how we manage it. Our attitudes and our beliefs affect our behavior. So if we have an, un, an inaccurate concept of risk, our risk management will be ineffective. If we think about risk in an accurate and complete way, then our management of risk will be more effective. So we must broaden our risk from the way that we currently think about it. If we don't identify a risk, it doesn't mean that it's not there. It means that we're taking that risk with our eyes closed and just progressing on our projects, assuming everything is okay, 
and then we turn around and we discover actually it wasn't okay. Um, don't worry about these pictures, they're Photoshop, no animals or birds were harmed in the making of my presentation, but it illustrates the point where, where we can just be going ahead on our project and assume it's all, all all right behind us, and actually it's not. Not seeing a risk doesn't mean it's not there, you just take it without looking. So we have to start with the concept of risk as uncertainty that matters and manage all and any uncertainties that matter. On the uncertainty side, we're not just thinking about events, we're thinking about all these four different types of uncertainty, events, variability, ambiguity, and emergence. And on the mattering side, we're not just thinking about threats, we're thinking about threats or opportunities, and not just threats or opportunities to our time scale and our, and our budget, uh, but to any project objective. So the, the, the landscape of risk, the landscape of the uncertainties that matter, that we're exposed to, is much broader than just uncertain future events that might have a negative effect on our project budget or schedule. There are many more risks that could affect your project, and we need to be aware of those and to manage them. So let me leave this uh, presentation asking you a couple of key questions. What risks are you taking without knowing? If you only think about threats to project time and cost, you're missing a huge amount of risks that could be affecting you. So here's my next question. If you don't include all of the uncertainties that matter in both your thinking and practice, why not? Would it be possible for you to change your thinking and your practice to include all of these things? And what changes do you need to make to the way that you think about risk and the way you act towards risk in order to manage all of the risks that you're currently taking on your project. It is possible to manage all of those risks so that we give ourselves the best possible chance of succeeding. I recommend that you try it. Thank you very much for your attention.